Are you a Christian content creator? Do you enjoy creating videos on YouTube for the Christian community or writing blogs and sharing your thoughts or doing a Christian podcast? If so, I would like to have a nice chat with you in regard to the lessons I've learned in creating content for the Christian community. Now, you may be asking some questions like, who am I and why should I? My name is Barry. I have been, actually, I owned some Christian websites from the beginning of 2000. And then I moved on to a two, actually now two or three Christian blog sites starting back in 2009 or 2008. 2009 is when I opened up the account that housed Inspiration Point, then later Christianity Explained. And more recently, I started using my YouTube account and created some videos under the same name, banner, of Christianity Explained. So, yeah, I do have experience with the business of Christian content creation. And I, and over the years, I've learned some very important lessons that I want to share with you that will be of value and be a help to you. First, it's always been my heart to motivate the Christian community to, to get out their story, to get out their message, the things that God put on your heart to share with the world outside. The reality is people are turning to online communities to get their information, to, to get the things that they're wanting that they may not be able to get at their local church. And yes, it's great to say, go to church, but a lot of people aren't doing that. Or they just go Sunday and live it. So what are they doing? Well, if they're lucky, they're in a very friendly uh, Bible study. But the reality is, no, they're going online and looking for things. They're hungry. One of the biggest uh, search terms out there is how to study the Bible. How can I get more out of my reading of Scripture? People are asking those questions. There's a reason why uh, videos of Joyce Myers are so popular, because people are hungry. They want information. They need to be fed in a way that they don't feel like they're being fed. So they need to hear your story. They need to hear your thoughts and the perspective you bring to the table when it comes to sharing of the faith. Now, I, I'm going to give you uh, lesson number one. Your story doesn't have to be boring. It could be very interesting. And please, do not tell me, oh, well, I didn't recover. It doesn't matter. Your story is a value. Some years ago, before she passed away, I had a friend who told me, well, Barry, I didn't recover from drugs. I was one of those straight, narrow church mouths. I had to say, tell her, Judy, you have an incredible story to tell <laughs> because you made a lot of good decisions. You stayed away from drugs. You can demonstrate to a lot of young people that it is possible to not give in to a lot of the temptation that so many others. You have wisdom to share that they never did. There are a lot of young women who, ne who came from a screwed up home and they don't know what it means to be a mother. They need someone who wasn't messed up telling and sharing, but done from a loving perspective. You have that. Same thing with you. I don't know your story. Okay, maybe you do have a little bit of mess up. Or maybe you had some great ones. But God has done an incredible thing. People out there. I have a friend who has is an incredible storyteller. And he tries to tell me, well, Barry, nobody wants to hear my war stories or stuff like that. I, used to, I had to tell him, bull. Yes, I said a little bit more than that. I would love to have gotten hit butt on this chair and have him tell. Because I'm confident because the guy is an incredible storyteller. 
<laughs> so, it doesn't matter how old you are or young, you have something to share. That's what's so exciting. That so let's say torpedo this this lie that said, Oh, I have oh, you have something to share. But you gotta find out what how to present it, how to communicate those stories and a value. That's one. Second lesson I had to learn and this came from a blunder of my own because I didn't ha have anyone who really told me. They said, oh, man, just, just sit there and wait for the great download. The Lord will tell you exactly what to do. I had to, oh, okay, I'm waiting. It doesn't work that way, folks. It never did. What What's supposed to happen is I needed to spend a daily amount of time of reading the scriptures, spend some time in worship and prayer, seeking the Lord because of the kind of ministry I'm in. All right? I had to learn and receive what to share because the ministry that I'm in had more to do with inner healing. It had more to do with giving words of encouragement and power and help people overcome some of the adversities that they have in their life. And that kind of requires certain things for me that may not be for somebody who, well, yeah, I'm a committed Christian, but uh, my thing is, it's camera. <laughs> I'm alluding to a gentleman named Sean Cannell. He has a great uh, thing with that. So, yeah, he's not going to have the same situation I do, but he does spend time in the world. He does pray. He does do all that. But it, his focus is on business. Mine is more like inner healing and encouragement. And in this case, I'm going into preaching mode. <laughs> that is, I'm I'm encouraging you, I'm exhorting, I'm giving you the push. That's what it really meant by preaching. <laughs> Hopefully, it is the Lord working through me. I don't know. But only you can tell that one. <laughs> and it's based on what God is saying to you, not uh, me. I'm just the vessel. That's the other lesson I had to learn. That yes, God wants to use me as I am. I've had more than a couple of occasions with the Lord telling me, Barry, I have no problem with your cre with your creativity, with your imagination, those things. Those role playing things you did, I could turn it to my purpose and use it for good. Just clean up some of the junk that came in. <laughs> That's the other thing I had to learn. It's a surrender to God what I'm doing and not worry and this is the next lesson not worry about what others may say or do I don't know if you know this, but everybody on the internet has an opinion <laughs> and it doesn't matter how <laughs> what you may think or say so I want to encourage you to ask the Lord for holy boldness to just share don't worry now, some people hopefully will give you constructive criticism and let you know, hey, you might not want to use that lapel mic, and this and this is actually is kind of important. Earlier, I did some a uh, couple of videos with a lapel mic, and I didn't realize the bit, the audio was just how bad it was. It didn't sound too good with me, but I wasn't sure. Thankfully, I had some people kindly point out, hey, uh, there's a problem. And this, I'm still actually on topic, believe it or not, because this is a perfect opportunity to bring up an important other lesson. I needed a community of people who would tell me what I need to hear, not just what I want to hear or what they think I want to hear, but tell me something in a in a right matter. Hey, uh, Matt, I'm listening to your, vi your video, but the audio, you might want to, oh, wait, is there that lapel mic that's causing the problem? Yeah, yeah, you might want to ditch it or get a new mic, uh, lapel. That's why I'm sitting in the chair and not the uh, recliner 
seen in the thumbnail. <laughs> See, it's important to get in with a community of brothers and sisters in faith. And in this case, I needed to be with other people who knew the business more than I did. And that's important. Because that will help you in the long run. They'll let you know some of the technical things and all that. That's why I spent some time with the chat live stream for uh, VidIQ and Think Media. So I could learn from others and hopefully get better. And interestingly enough, there actually is a parallel between the blogosphere and YouTube. The only, uh, and in case you're looking at me blank, uh, let's spell it out for you. Both of them have to do with creating content that meets the need of you, the person watching the video. If this was a blog post, I'd be saying you, the person reading this blog post. And that's the perfect segue for this next lesson. When people are searching for your content, yes, it's great. They are hopefully looking for a wonderful thing, but it needs to fit their needs. All right? And that's the, that's the key. That's why I started this video asking <clears throat> if you are, are interested in creating content for the platform. Because you came because you had a specific need and a specific want. And I'm speaking specific targeting because that is the assumption that you are. All right? Now, hopefully, if you're a gamer, you might be learning and saying, hey, wait a minute, I'm learning. Yeah, of course. Because I'm not, even though I'm targeting one community, other communities are, are served too. And here's a little uh, FYI for you. I can thank the, the uh, gaming community for helping me to learn a few uh, important lessons too. They were a blessing to me, so hopefully this video will be a blessing to them. Yes, and the reason I'm targeting, because I've noticed, as much as I love listening to some of the big uh, YouTubers talking, it would be kind of nice if they targeted the face space. Now, there's another aspect that needs to be talked, which really kind of annoys me when it comes to uh, some of the wonderful personalities that I enjoy. A lot of time when they talk about the income generation, and yes, we do have to talk about the money. Remember, Paul did not say uh, that say that money was the root of all evil. He said the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, okay? Stop wanting to earn a little extra income. The problem is if when that money is becomes your master, not God. So let not your vision be clouded by greed and the uh, illusion of six-figure income. Is it for real? Yes. If you're in the right niche, if you are doing some uh, high-priced tech review, if you're doing something that requires the customers to buy in the affiliate link an expensive gaming product or something that costs money. Yes, it is possible. It is possible to uh, have develop a diversity of income stream. And you suddenly learn about it. But I noticed that these guys do not talk too much about the faith base in this. Uh, niche. Why? Because those are not um, big money makers. Yes, you can earn an income if you write it, an ebook and sell it through affiliate marketing, if you do the, all those things, but your income potential is a lot smaller. 
than otherwise. You're really depending on donation along with the, the occasional Google AdSense or WordSense in, in the case of my blog site. That's why it's important you learn to have a diversity. That's why I have a blog, a YouTube channel, and podcast because I had to diversify so I can at least hopefully get uh, something. Now, as it happened, I have disability and I get SSDI and money that way. So I'm trying to earn through Google AdSense some extra income so it's not totally reliant on that. That's the reality of the faith-based uh, community. And unless you have a ton, and we're talking quite a lot, yeah. <laughs> And just for uh, technical, uh, for a little bit of technicality, currently, as per this date of this video, you need 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. The 4,000 watch hour is for that year. And it is challenging and it's possible, but it takes time. That's the other thing. My audience takes a while for it to grow, and eventually people will get there. How long? I don't know. I will. I have to learn to trust God for that. Yes, God will bring in the traffic, but I still got to get off my butt. I still got to work at creating the content. I still have to put an effort in, in the blog, the podcast, and the YouTube video. I'm still required to show up and participate. Trust God for the result, but my, uh, my butt need to get going. That's why it's so important that I create these videos and and the podcast and the and the blog. <clears throat> and it's really nice, and it is important to say, "Oh, don't do it for the money." Well, I'm not. I'm doing it to serve a community. And I have a friend who trying to make the point, but I didn't get a chance to point to tell him that uh, this niche is not a moneymaker. I know that. I knew that from back in the early 2000s. <laughs> if I really wanted to make money, I'd have gone the tech route. I didn't. I, I ended up going this route. Hmm. But, that, but that's important that you understand that. So you have a sober view. But we are told to be sober-minded and use sober judgment. Yes, trust the Lord. Trust the Holy Spirit to give you guidance and instruction. He will do that. And he'll let you know what is right and true and what is not for you personally. That's why, as I pointed out at the beginning, you need to have a relationship with the Lord. You need to develop that. Or otherwise, you can find yourself uh, burned out. And I've suddenly gone that route, too. That's where the community comes in, when you need it, uh, then, especially. So don't be afraid to invite hmm, uh, others to help you. And don't be discouraged if you happen to pick up uh, some big-time YouTuber like Daryl Hughes. He wrote a great book. But uh, I didn't really want to spend too much time with his marketing telling me uh, the big fissures because it's not where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> Move on, bro. <laughs> and that comes from my years of experience. And I'm hoping you do. Be, be willing. Trust the Holy Spirit. Trust his guidance. Trust his word. And do what he is calling you to do. Hmm. I would love to uh, chime in on the type of thing, but I think I'll save that for a different video because uh, I'm not really sure what to say. But I don't want to spend time with attacking. I think, yeah, I think I'll save that for another video. All right, I got on long enough. Hope this was a value to you. Hope you stay through the end. And I probably should have said this earlier on, but. 
Please, if you find this, this content of value to you, love it if you hit the like button and if, and want to keep getting content from me, please hit the uh, subscribe and the notification bell. All right. Thank you for your time. Hope you have a blessed day. See you when I see ya.